it came a long way to be found by you. Find more, spend less. Home Goods, go finding. Is this song in the key of boring? It sounds like you need a delicious blue bunny treat that's loaded to the last bite. They have reached fun lightenment. What the hell is that? A dress. Says who? Calvin Klein. That is one of the classic scenes in Clueless. Absolutely. And Alicia Silverstone just recreated it with the help of her 10-year-old son, Bear. Cher, get in here. What's up, Daddy? What the hell is that? A dress. Happening now. Homicides in the first half of 2021 appear to be up over 2020. But these aren't just numbers. Each one is a story. We talk with a mother who knows that all too well. They're called breakthrough cases. Coming up, we'll talk to a local family who contracted COVID despite being fully vaccinated. They tell us they're grateful they still got vaccinated because it could have been a lot worse. A little bit of activity on the radar screen we'll take a look at and talk about increasing rain chances. I'll see you in a bit. News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, a body found in a parked car at a Walmart in Cibolo. And now the Cibolo Police Department is investigating. Here's what we know right now. The body found this afternoon at a Walmart in the 600 block of Cibolo Valley Drive. The victim has not been identified. We're working to get more details, including the cause of death. We'll provide an update as soon as new information comes in. The Texas Department of Public Safety now assisting in a murder investigation of a man shot and killed in May. Today, a dive team helped SAPD look for evidence in the case of Jonathan Lopez Urbano's death. They searched a pond near Saints Ark Drive and Saints Haven at the Hidden Lake Mobile Home Park, where the 21 year old was found dead on May 25th. At last check, no one has been arrested. A teen is dead, another man injured, and police still looking for that suspect. They say 15-year-old Tristan Dade Rosas died this morning after he was hit by a stray bullet while playing a video game inside his bedroom. This after a fight between two men led to gunfire in the parking lot outside of an apartment complex in the 8600 block of Waters Edge Drive. Investigators say one suspect was shot in the groin, the other remains on the run. Could this be the deadliest year of the decade for San Antonio? According to SAPD crime statistics, January through June had the most homicides of any year since 2011. And we are continuing to outpace last year's homicides with 87 as of today compared to 80 this time last year. As Garrett Berger explains, these are more than numbers. They're people with families left behind, including one woman whose son was murdered in 2016. And to this day, his killer hasn't been caught. When a stray bullet struck a 15 year old this morning on the west side, Janie Esparza's thoughts turned to his family and the pain she knows they're going through. It's very sad and the first th person I visit is mother. It's just, it's just senseless. Esparza's only child, 20 year old Isaac Orozco, was murdered in July 2016, shot at their apartment complex by someone in a black SUV. My son made it all the way to my apartment knocking on the door. When I went out there, I saw him, you know, he was he was shot on the floor. Orozco was one of 149 homicides in 2016, the deadliest full year in the past decade. But 2021 has the potential to be worse. There were 74 homicides through June. That's more than the first half of 2016 or any other year since 2011. Hearing the numbers are going up takes Esparza back to her own worst day. Everything that I felt that day, when I saw my son, when I, when, you know, the doctors came out and said he had passed, it all just comes back to me. Reliving an experience that too many mothers are going through. It's like you're walking around with a big hole in your chest where your heart is missing. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Now, a San Antonio Police Department spokeswoman sent KSAT a statement saying in part that many major cities are seeing an increase in homicides and other violent crimes. Though she noted the latest SAPD numbers show that overall violent crimes and property crimes were both down in the previous six months compared to last year. A shift in testimony today in the Otis McCain trial. Prosecutors today calling a NASA image analyst to the stand. Yeah, part of his job is to enhance and analyze images from the crime scene, including one showing the murder weapon. 
Erica Hernandez joins us live to break down that testimony, which could certainly be damaging for the defense, Erica. Yeah, so David Bretz has been with NASA for 25 years, and he was asked by the prosecution to apply his expertise into this case. Now, this is the same type of image analysis he did while investigating the Shuttle Columbia explosion back in 2003. He stated how he was asked by the state to focus on several images. There was video of the suspect entering the lobby uh, of the building, and they wanted uh, enhancement of... Uh, his facial features. The uh, tool that I used was the unsharp mask. Now, Brett's was able to sharpen, enlarge, and clear up those images. The most Im the most compelling image enhancement shown is that of suspect's hand that's holding the gun behind Detective Benjamin Marconi's head. We are not showing that image, but while the enhancement shows something there similar to a tattoo, Brett's can't say for sure it matches a tattoo pictured in one of McCain's suspect's photos taken the day he was arrested. The features are not good enough to uh, identify that as the tattoo on the wrist. But there appears to be something there, and it's just unclear what that is. Now, testimony is still ongoing right now. We'll have more on what was being presented as far as evidence from CSI coming up at 6. Steve, Ursula. Thank you, Erica. Handbags, shoes, electronics. The San Antonio Police Department getting ready for its next auction. The auction starts at 630 tonight, but bidders can start viewing items at 530. It's happening at the VFW Post 9186, that's at 650 East White, over by Mission County Park. All the items can be purchased with cash or a credit card. We have a link to view the full list of items on our website, ksat.com. COVID cases continuing to rise all across the country as well as here locally, and that includes some breakthrough cases, people who get infected despite being vaccinated. Health officials say those cases have been mild. Those people generally got it from unvaccinated folks. One local family among the breakthrough cases, and they tell our Marilyn Morris they remain confident, though, in the vaccine. Just as soon as they were able, the Shute family got vaccinated against COVID-19. Actually, during the big snowstorm, we managed to get in and get our first round, and so we were done. And all of us at the same time, we were done. March 9th was our second um, round. And so we felt very confident. But earlier this month, Karen felt crummy and thought she had a sinus infection. I went over to, an, to the urgent care doctor and they said, OK, well, let's go ahead and take the test. And while I was there, they said, you're positive. And I said, I'm what? <laughs> I was shocked. So the entire family got tested. Four out of five had the virus, though they may never have known it except for the testing. The worst that happened to me was it was like a bad allergy attack. Except for a little sniffle, their son Carter had no symptoms. They are among what are called breakthrough cases, people who contract COVID despite full vaccination. Locally, there have been about 800 breakthrough cases. That's a small fraction of the million plus people fully vaccinated. While vaccinated people can still get infected, doctors say serious illness is very rare and symptoms usually mild. The shoots don't know where they got the virus, likely around the 4th of July. They do know they're grateful for their medical treatment and the vaccine. I'm very thankful we got it. Thinking about how bad it could have been if we had not had this boost in our immune system. Uh, we could have ended up in the hospital. I'm still pretty tired and I'm disappointed I'm not back to work, but I will be. Yeah. And that's better than the alternative. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Is San Antonio seeing a housing boom? And a new report from the San Antonio Board of Realtors says while there are more homes hitting the market, prices are still increasing. Right now, the average price of a home in the San Antonio area, about $345,114. That's 19% more than this time last year, when on average homes were 289,517. One home sales expert, David Green, says for many families across the country, the grueling search for a new home has turned home buyers away. The past three months, the market's been so hot, you couldn't touch it. If you try to buy a house at all, you got outbid by 20 people. They've been chasing homes, trying to buy one, going through the emotional gauntlet of trying to buy a house, and they've decided that they've had enough. Green says if you've been searching for a new home and haven't had luck landing one, 
You might want to wait till the winter when there's less competition. Outside right now, temperatures around the 90 degree mark, even mid 80s in West Kerrville at the moment. 91 Lakey, 89 currently in Panama Maria and for the most part, upper 80s near 90 degrees. And we did have a little bit of rain earlier today, far southwest of San Antonio, closer to Maverick, Zavala and uh, DeWitt counties. As you look at temperatures out there the rest of this evening, pretty typical temperatures gradually falling through the 80s, then through the 70s. But notice this. A stray pop up shower or two already. We've seen one or two pop up around Bear County and we could see a few more. We'll take a closer look at these and talk about some increasing rain chances around the corner coming right up. Camping with KZ, powered by Davis Law Firm. Yes, the Dallas Cowboys en route to their California training camp after the NFL allowed them to return to their summer home in Oxnard this season. And that's after the COVID-19 pandemic wiped out camping in California last year. Now, a lot of questions for a team that finished just six and 10, and it starts at the top with the quarterback. Yeah, our Greg Simmons already in California awaiting the team's arrival. He joined us mm. on the shoreline of the Pacific Ocean. And you know Greg's relaxed because he's not wearing a tie. That's right, because this is one of our favorite locations right here, this picturesque moment that was robbed from us by the COVID pandemic last year. Now, what are the top two priorities you have to narrow down for the Dallas Cowboys? That's easy, the Dallas defense, which was atrocious, and the health of their quarterback, Dak Prescott. Nothing short of remarkable what he has been able to demonstrate in his comeback here from a horrific ankle injury in week five, going through two surgeries, finally getting back on the field, back to form in just seven months. Now headed into six training camp with the face of the franchise on hand, gotten him back to his career point at this time. We got an amazing support system with my family, uh, friends, obviously organization with the Cowboys and teammates that were behind me 100%. And I think that makes it a lot easier when you're when you're battling or overcoming something like I did is that uh, I hold myself to high expectations and high standards, but I know it's a lot of other people that um, just hold me accountable to my own words. And so that, that's just great when you have that. And it's just allowed me to keep pushing and be better. And as I said, that my plans when I head into camp are to be better than I was before I broke my ankle. Now, to take note here, Hard Knocks will be here to kind of document everything. The Cowboys have landed at LAX. or having a police escort all the way up here to Oxnard, California. We'll try and meet them at the hotel upon their arrival. And I would say barricaded headquarters. We'll have that for you coming up live at 6. Live from Southern California, Greg Simmons, KSI 12 Sports. That is quite the view. Thank you, Greg. Well, it's a window of opportunity in space exploration. Today, Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon, blasted off to outer space. A look at the historic flight and why today's mission is so revolutionary. Next. A minutes long trip to outer space. It's the groundbreaking launch that took place this morning, sending Amazon founder Jeff Bezos and three others into space and back in 10 minutes, no pilot on board. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez with details on what this means for the future of space tourism. Two, one. Launching into space and history. On our way to space with our first human crew. Blue Origin's New Shepard rocket with Amazon founder Jeff Bezos and three other passengers inside that capsule at the top, traveling at more than three times the speed of sound, reaching space in just three minutes. Max Q is confirmed. Beautiful burn on that BE3 engine. The capsule separating, leaving Bezos, his brother Mark, 82-year-old aviation pioneer Wally Funk, and 18-year-old paying passenger Oliver Damon with a few minutes of waiting weightlessness to take in the view oh, I love it. Here, catch. and even play catch yeah! before returning to earth the booster landing first followed by the passenger's capsule parachuting safely to the ground for Bezos mission accomplished what we're doing is st the first step of something big. And for Funk, who first trained to travel to space in the 60s and didn't get to go until now, a long-awaited dream come true. It was That's wonderful. True. I want to go again fast. <laughs> <laughs> 
And Funk is now the oldest person ever to go to space. Oliver Damon is the youngest. History made here in the West Texas desert with the first of what Bezos says will be many trips bringing passengers to space. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Van Horn, Texas. Nothing has ever happened in Van Horn that important. <laughs> I really? Think. <laughs> that has got to be. I, I, that's got to go up on, on every wall in town. I would say you're probably right. All right, 89 degrees out there. We are not seeing the widespread storms we saw yesterday. Adam. No, yesterday at this time, we had a little cool front, a little wind shift line drop into town, and that really helped to generate the lift we needed to get those showers and thunderstorms going. Today, we're just relying on the old-fashioned daytime heating from the sun to bubble up a few showers, and that's what we've seen. A few. Let's take a look at the radar right now. And this is over actually the past two hours, and you see a little bit developing on the west side of town, very briefly there, especially between 410 and 1604 over the past two hours. And right now, near I 35 and 410, one little shower left over. It was heavier just a little bit ago, but now it just has some moderate rain right over I 35 as it intersects with 410 and a little sprinkle just north of Mission. San Juan, but this is pushing southward right through Somerset Road toward Garza Crossing. If it lasts all that much longer, shouldn't be much time left in that one. Even just north of Divine, we had one little pop up there. You can see over the past few hours. This is a little better put together here. So south of Eagle Pass, some heavy rain right along the Rio Grande. Lightning and thunder associated with it, but nothing severe. And this is an area that actually saw some soaking rain earlier today. We're talking Maverick County, Zavala County, Dimmick County, that's where we had some soaking rain earlier today. And there were some pockets of that area that had early this morning between one and two inches of rainfall. And now we're seeing another downpour pop up in uh, Maverick County. So good maintenance rain, keeping them drought free down there. It's nice to see that elsewhere across the state. Not a whole lot of activity, but here's the main driving force as we go late, later into the week. This upper level disturbance, that spin that we have, that upper level clock counterclockwise spin that upper disturbance is going to drift our way and it's going to position itself more favorably as we get into Thursday tomorrow more of the same just some of those pop up random isolated downpours but once we get into Thursday we get on the stronger side of this upper level low even first thing in the morning we could have some showers developing and then especially into the afternoon as we generate some of that daytime heating and get more instability some showers heavy rain and lightning and thunder associated with it as well and it should be a little more widespread at that point the showers and storms being more numerous than what we have out there today. So tomorrow, 30%, so isolated by Thursday, up to about 40%, so being scattered, but still not everybody's going to get the rain. It's going to be about 40% of our area. Luck of the draw with that one. And I think mostly east of the Rio Grande in locations closer to San Antonio and eastward. 88 degrees, that's our temperature right now. Dew point is 68. Yesterday at this time, we dropped down to 75 degrees because of the rain, but right now it's closer to reality, but we're still running below average for this time of year. The average high is 95 degrees, and usually that's where we'd be You know, quite often. I should say that's where we'd be at this hour. Stinson's at 90, Castroville 91 and Hondo 94, Pleasanton 93, even Del Rio 96 degrees, so not really too hot anywhere. No triple digits on the map right now. Tomorrow we'll start the day at 72. A lot of sunshine right from the get go in the morning. Make it into the low 90s, about 91 for the high. And there's that 20 to 30 percent chance of just one of those rogue showers or brief thunderstorms popping up here and there in random spots, especially in the afternoon. Del Rio tomorrow up to 98. Canyon Lake at 90. Beeville 90 degrees. Lackland area about 90. Timberwood Park a high temperature of 89. Into Thursday, there's that best chance of the week or highest chance, if you will, at 40 percent, especially in the afternoon, still near 90. Then a more familiar summertime weather pattern seems to settle in with sunshine and temperatures back into the mid 90s consistently. Something we might recognize as summer. Exactly. Yeah, really. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. All right. The sun, the sand, Greg Simmons. On let's go beach. to let's go to California as Greg is awaiting the Cowboys, Greg. 
And in fact, the Cowboys have just arrived, and this is one of the perks of covering the Dallas Cowboys in Southern California. Picturesque moments like this behind me. When we come back, what did the Cowboys have to say before they start training camp in 2021, returning to Oxnard for the first time in over a year, and it's time to play the elimination game of the NBA Finals. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our live coverage of the Dallas Cowboys training camp. Over the next two weeks, we bring you this beautiful picture of the Pacific Ocean before we head to Oxnard and meet up with the team as they arrive here. That's after the COVID pandemic robbed them of their training camp here last year. Now, one of the first aboard the team charter today, running back Ezekiel Elliott is looking for a bounce-back season. Amari Cooper reporting for duty after missing all of this off-season workouts due to his ankle. But I don't think anyone is more excited about this year's training camp than Dak Prescott after that ankle injury that could have ended a lot of careers. Instead, he's back fighting through through two surgeries, then the endless rehab to get him back to where he doesn't even want to talk about the injury in camp. But what has his whole experience taught him? To actually just see myself six, seven months later from, from the injury or whatever it is. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just knowing that the, there is no limits. There is no limits to what the mind can do. There is no limits to what you can push yourself to do. Um, there, there's a lot of injuries that... Uh, that have more of a mental weight than they actually do a physical weight. And if you can learn how to get that off of you just by trusting yourself, believing in what you can do, trusting the doctors and the people around you, uh, you, you can do pretty much anything you want coming back from majority of the injuries that this game gives us. Milwaukee Bucks can claim their second NBA championship, or the Phoenix Guns can force a Game 7. It's Game 6 of the NBA Finals. The Bucks now are five-port favorites going into this game tonight in Milwaukee that they can close out the series and win just their second title in NBA franchise history. Or the Phoenix Suns can bounce back from losing three games in a row for a shot at the first-ever NBA title. One thing that stands out for young Giannis from Game 5 is seeing LeBron James sitting courtside. This is crazy. This is a crazy story. This is not a promo. The night before, I was watching Space Jam on uh, HBO. Yeah, so I was watching Space Jam, you know, and, uh, you know, there it goes. This is the course I'd sit. It boils down to getting it done. We got to win one game to put them back on the plane. That's it, you know, and, and you have to have that determination that you're willing to do whatever it takes to put them back on the plane. All right, and all tips off tonight, live on KSAT 12 at 8 o'clock. We're headed to Oxnard, live from Southern California, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Greg. Roughing it as usual. Yeah. Uh-huh. We'll be right back. Tomorrow, right near 90 degrees, a few stray pop-ups in the afternoon. Slightly higher chances as we get into Thursday. Then a more familiar summertime weather pattern kicks in and we'll have temperatures mid 90s and a lot of sunshine. But tomorrow, starting the day in the 70s by the afternoon, low 90s. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is up next. See you back here at 6.